Episode 181, Detective's Jolt. No, it has nothing to do with Kevin. Claire shook her head. When did this happen? Eileen questioned. Claire thought that she was ridiculous for thinking of a story like this. But unfortunately, Logan would not get Trevor in trouble, so Claire would have to take the initiative herself to leave the family. Today, she paused for a moment. She hadn't told Logan about the matter, because Eileen had delayed her stay. But now that her mother had her money, she was finally ready to talk to him. If it has nothing to do with this trash, who is it related to? She seemed to go all out to get to the bottom of things. Mom, please don't ask. I promise, I made this decision myself. It has nothing to do with anyone. Claire glanced impatiently at her and said, All right, you can go back now. I'll be heading back to the company now. You... She originally wanted to ask Claire why she stayed at the villa on the hill last night. The first thing Warren did was call his third brother, Alec, who was a detective. Hey man, will you help me look for someone? The car he's driving is a Bugatti, and the license plate is Sacramento C0000. He quickly told him what he saw. All right, there's only one Bugatti, which is Martin Henderson's car, so there's no need to check it. Alec was stunned. He didn't understand why his brother was getting involved with the most powerful man in the city. Warren did not know that he was dealing with Mr. Henderson. Usually, he knew all of the big shots of the city, but he had to so he didn't offend them. Martin Henderson? He exclaimed. This man was either acquainted with Mr. Henderson, or he was Mr. Henderson. Brother, you can't. Have you offended him? Alec's heart sank. Why did it sound like he had a grudge against him? If he offended Mr. Henderson, the hope that their family would rise in the social rankings would be nearly impossible. So much so that if Martin had some tricks up his sleeves, his family probably wouldn't even be able to protect his current position. It should be. It's not necessarily considered offensive. He wiped off the cold sweat on his forehead as he said uncertainty. He was glad that he stopped Grace at that time and gave in to Kevin. Otherwise, he would not be able to talk to his brother now. However, he was slightly nervous. Even though he had paid the old lady off, would he still be upset with the two of them? Warren, what's going on? If he offended Martin then the family must be prepared early. If he can apologize, then apologize. It's like this. Warren did not dare to hide anything from his brother, so he detailed everything that happened after he went to Beverly Hills to look at the house and the conflict between the man and the older woman. After hearing that, Alec frowned. Brother, are you saying that it wasn't Mr. Henderson who was driving the car, but another young man? Hmm. Ren, do you think it could have been his nephew, Wilson Myers? Warren asked. He knew that Mr. Henderson had some young men in his family, including a nephew. Impossible. Wilson isn't married yet, and he can barely fight. Alec denied it in a deep voice, then said, But you said that the mother mentioned he was a live-in son-in-law, correct? I remember a person that I heard about not long ago. Ooh.
Episode 182 The Big Shots Brother He looked in the direction the woman pointed to. When he saw it, his eyes instantly widened as his soul left his body. Why was that car here? Even though it was already late autumn, a layer of cold sweat instantly appeared on Trevor's forehead. This car in front of him was the same one he had almost crashed into when he was at the Weston Hotel. At that time, his car was only centimeters away from hitting it. If it wasn't for Scarlet reminding him to brake, he probably would have crashed into it. Although he didn't bump into it, he was extremely nervous. Now that the car was here, his first thought was that the owner had seen his reckless driving and came here to teach him a hard lesson. Trev? What's wrong? Lorena was a little doubtful. Even if Logan was driving the vehicle, he wasn't that scary. How could he be flustered and scared when it was just a car? Lorena, I, I can't give you a ride today. Take a taxi back home. He swallowed his saliva, turned around, and ran. Right now, his first thought was to run. Run away first. He could not afford to get in trouble with a person rich enough to buy that car. If someone came to cause trouble for him, Logan wouldn't be able to protect him. Watching Trevor run away, Lorena began to fume with anger. A coward, she thought. Isn't it just his grandfather? Was there a need to be so scared? She crossed her arms over her chest and took a few steps forward. She wanted to see what kind of terrifying person would get out of the car. Then, the car stopped, and the door swung open.
always getting angry. Trevor? Who is he? Lorena couldn't help but ask him. He seemed to hate this young man in front of her. However, what puzzled her was that when Kevin saw the car, he looked scared enough to wet himself. However, when he saw the real driver of the car, he grew angry. Lorena couldn't keep up. Don't worry about it. That was because a minute ago, he was scared away by Kevin's car. Of course, he couldn't tell Lorena that the person in front of him was a stay-at-home husband who he had bullied for the past three years. Now tell me where his respect is going. Episode 183. Hiding Behind Allegations I don't care. Why are you being so rude? Lorena pouted in dissatisfaction, but she was more curious about who the driver was. Without Kevin saying anything, Trevor became increasingly curious about how he purchased this car. He wasn't as dumb as Eileen. However, he knew that this car wasn't rented. It would already be so expensive to rent, so why would he? So he knew that Kevin must have bought the car. But the key point was, where did he get so much money? Claire, is it you? Trevor glared fiercely at her. Is that me? She was confused. Did you give this piece of trash money to buy this car? He asked angrily. She laughed. Trevor, do you think I have that much money to give to Kevin? As in, Kevin Bennett? After hearing this name, Lorena was extremely shocked. She would never have thought that the young man in front of her who drove a luxury car was Kevin, the famous brother-in-law of the Wrights, Kevin Bennett. Since she came to the company, she had to hear his name hundreds of times daily. Trevor hated the man down to his core, while the rest of his family would shit-talk him every chance they got. This led Lorena to think that all of their criticisms were true and that this man was a piece of shit. So when he got out of this luxury car, she would have never been able to guess that this was the man she had heard so much about because she felt that a stay-at-home husband couldn't afford such a flashy car. However, Kevin opened it. It was no wonder that Trevor was so angry. He was mad that he couldn't figure out how he managed to buy the car, but Lorena caught on immediately. Trevor was just jealous. You don't have that much money, but the company does. He glared at the increasing number of people surrounding the company's entrance and said fiercely, Trevor, what do you mean? Claire's pretty face turned cold. What do I mean? Don't you know? He sneered, then pointed at Kevin's nose and said, Claire, don't think that I don't know. You were the one who was embezzling funds to buy your piece of shit husband this car.
whispering, President Wright seems to have misappropriated the company's engineering funds to buy a car for her good-for-nothing husband. No, I'm sure. It's not like you don't know that her husband gave it to her as a takeout gift. For a takeout luxury car that wants to buy 20 million? Other than corruption, is there any other way? I didn't expect her to be this person. She looks rather decent every day. Decent? It's all just for show. She's too brainless. You should just misappropriate the project fee. Why are you still so high profile? You actually bought a $20 million car to prove it? With a few words from everyone, this matter had been taken as fact and the rumor began to spread. Kevin's expression was somewhat gloomy. Didn't he know that Kevin wanted to get revenge? He hadn't even settled the score with Trevor for pushing Claire out of the Beverly Hills project. Yet Trevor was the one starting shit today. Claire, you'd better explain to me how much money you have taken from the company as soon as possible. It would be too late if you waited for Lorena to find out. Trevor threatened her coldly. He had made up his mind that regardless of whether she used the project funds, he would bribe the finance department to prepare a fake account, trying to show that she had stolen money. Trevor, I'll say this one more time. I have never taken a single penny from this company. If you want to check, just do it. She gnashed her teeth. After speaking, she didn't care if he believed her and prepared to go into the company to retrieve her things. Stop right there. Lorena pulled her back and sneered. You want to leave? Did you ask me for my opinion? Let go. Claire was infuriated. What if I don't? She glanced back at Claire provocatively. She even dropped her fear of hurting the beautiful woman because Trevor was too far away to stop her. If she refused to accept it, she would hit her until she couldn't take it anymore. As for Kevin, he was useless. What was there to be afraid of? Angry, Claire slapped Lorena across the face. This slap stunned her for a long time. Bitch, you're asking to die. After reacting, Lorena's eyes immediately turned red, pouncing toward her with bared fangs and brandished claws. At this moment, a large hand grabbed her from behind. You want to try touching her again? Kevin's voice was ice cold. She indeed was an idiot. This bitch thought she could beat up his wife in front of him. Bitch, do you want to die? Kevin was a good-for-nothing man. What right did he have to make a move on her? Let go of her! Trevor also stood up angrily. No matter what Lorena said, he was still considered half a fighter. If he could only look on helplessly as his girlfriend was beaten up, what kind of man was he? Episode 184 Slasher Smile Kevin
Pops that he was still indifferent about fighting them. She directly scolded him. Trevor, I'm really blind to actually have taken a fancy to a cowardly bastard like you. Claire, listen to me. His face turned red, and he wanted to explain, but she cut him off. If you're scared, then you're scared. Don't find an excuse for me. If I dare to beat up a bitch like her, but you don't dare to deal with trash like him, then you're the real piece of trash. Did you hit Claire? Kevin's face turned cold. Previously, in Beverly Hills, he had seen something wrong with his wife's face, but he didn't think too much about it back then. Now, it seemed that this woman in front of him had really beaten her up. I beat up this slut. What? You? Trash? You still want to take revenge for her? Lorena sneered. She wasn't afraid of what he would do to her. Behind her, she had Trevor to protect her. She thought, which hand did you use? His tone suddenly became calm. Those familiar with Kevin knew that the calmer he was, the angrier he was deep down. Which hand? Why do you care? She snorted coldly. Kevin smiled. Since you won't say it, then I'll just take it as you hitting me with both of your hands. What are you doing? She looked at him warily. His smile gave her goosebumps. Nothing. He shook his head. He paused for a while and then said, That's right. I wanted to teach you a lesson. Lesson? The corners of her mouth curled up because of his vague statement. You're just a piece of trash. Yet you want to teach me? A crisp sound of a bone breaking could be heard in the arena. Before Lorena could finish her sentence, she was instantly replaced by miserable howls like a pig being butchered. She was half kneeling on the ground, looking at Lorena rolling around and wailing in pain. Everyone in the field looked at each other, confused. What in the world? What happened? What happened to her? And why was she on the ground? That's not right. Look at her hands. Finally, those with sharp eyes noticed that something was amiss. Everyone's gaze shifted to her hands, their eyes filled with astonishment. Both of them were broken. They were dislocated from her arms. It was as if someone had broken them in a flash, exposing the bone in her wrist. Everyone felt their scalps go numb. Without a doubt, this was Kevin's handiwork. But how did he do it? No one in the venue saw him move. All she knew was that as she spoke, Lorena dropped to her knees. Even Ms. Rice herself didn't know how Kevin broke her wrist. She only reacted when a heart-wrenching pain came from her wrist. Kevin was just too fast. Are you satisfied with this lesson? He asked indifferently. He would definitely not be lenient towards someone who dared to touch his weak spot. She was half kneeling on the ground, her entire body trembling. Due to the excruciating pain, her forehead was already covered in sweat. But even so, she still looked at Kevin with extreme hatred and spoke with a hoarse voice. I... I will kill you. All right. I'll be waiting for you to kill me. He smiled faintly. People who wanted to kill him could line up from the south to the north of the city, but he was still alive and well. Kevin, you... You're going too far. Trevor held his breath for a long time before he finally said that sentence. Although he scolded Kevin, his body was frozen in fear. At this time, he was almost ten yards away from Kevin. You want to stand up for her? Kevin glanced at him with a faint smile. Being provoked by Kevin in front of so many people, Trevor definitely wouldn't have been able to endure it. However, he had to endure it. There was some embarrassment and annoyance on his face. Just then, a Range Rover stopped in the middle of the road. The car door opened, and Logan, leaning on a walking stick, got off. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! The chairman is here! The moment he appeared, everyone from the company seemed to have found their composure, and their expressions instantly recovered. Grandfather! Trevor's expression was also overjoyed. He walked up to his grandfather, prepared to fabricate the story. Grandpa, Kevin, he... 
He pretended to be angry as he spoke, but before he could finish his sentence, a stern voice sounded beside his ear. Neil. The person who said that was naturally Logan. Although he looked sickly at the moment, he had an unquestionable dignity. Grandfather? He was puzzled. If he had to kneel, it would be in defense of Kevin. But why would Logan do such a thing? I told you to kneel down. Are you deaf? His face was angry as he knocked the ground heavily with the cane in his hand. Episode 185 Miscalculated Risk All right. Did you not know how great of a price we had to pay? When the Beverly Hills Project first came to Sacramento, the first-class families had to fight neck and neck for it. It was an honor that the small Wright family was able to have it at all. Kevin had helped them and pulled a few strings with his old friend, and Trevor just shit on the opportunity given to them. If they were able to have been successful with this project, it would have sent them into the high upper class they wouldn't have to worry about money ever again. How stupid could Trevor have been to sell them? He even sold them for a discount. How could Logan not be furious? When Claire heard this, she also almost exploded with anger. She thought that Trevor was just trying to take control of the project by hiring Lorena. But now, she realized that he had gotten rid of the project as a whole. That fucking idiot Trevor. Does he not know that all these projects were supposed to be their big break? Could it be that he didn't know that these projects were supposed to be their new money tree projects? Grandfather, I sold those projects to other families for the very sake of our family. Trevor braced himself to defend himself. Naturally, he would not admit that he sold those projects for selfish desires. For the sake of our family? Logan was so angry that his chest tightened, and then he angrily asked, Tell me, what's so good for our family? Grandfather, don't you understand the principle that possessing a treasure is a crime? Beverly Hills is a highly profitable project. Countless first and second class families were watching it. But in the end, our little company got it. Tell me. How could those other families not get jealous? If I didn't sell some of them, the powerful families would try to take them from us. 
his argument did make sense. For a hot spot like the Beverly Hills Project, everyone wanted to get a share of it. Still, now that they monopolized it, other families were bound to be jealous. Bullshit! Logan could throw up. He was so angry. You vile asshole. You were clearly selling all those projects at a low price to satisfy your own selfish desire. Yet you still have the guts to lie to my face? How could you be so idiotic in handling the company's funds? He had always had high hopes for his grandson and had always felt that he could lead their family to prosperity in the future. However, he just jumped on the chance to sell their projects because Claire was out of town. He let his hatred for Claire get the best of him and put the company's well-being at stake. He thought Trevor could do better than Claire. But in just a few days, he had squandered all of the projects. He even had the balls to sell the most expensive ones. After he heard the news in the afternoon, he was so angry that he almost fainted on the spot. Grandfather, just relying on yourself is not enough to raise our family to the first class. We still need to obtain the approval of more high-class families in the city. Only if they acknowledge us will our family be able to make some big moves. In this time, we gained some more approval by selling them these projects. I didn't sell them to get rid of them at all. I wanted to sell them as a peace offering to these families so they would remember us in the future. What he said was reasonable, but to put it bluntly, he wanted their family to be the bitch to all these powerful families. If he performed well, they might even make Trevor the head bitch of their company. You. You idiot. Do you really think that those families would accept us as an equal? He didn't know whether he was foolish, but as long as Trevor had a brain, he should be able to understand that all these second-tier families and line families were all ingrates who couldn't feed their fill. Rather than saying that he was trying to show goodwill to these families, it would be more accurate to say that he was showing these top-tier families that we could easily be fucked over. Why not? Trevor couldn't help but ask, and then said, When I signed the contract with one of the families, the manager told me that if our family has any trouble in the future, we should give him a call, and he would be able to take care of us. In fact, he didn't even say those words. However, Trevor was talking out of his ass just to make himself look better in his grandfather's eyes. In any case, it was impossible for his grandfather to fact check it. Episode 186 Guilty Can Influence
better than a mouse they could trap and get rid of without thinking twice. Bang! Logan viciously swung his walking stick at his face, instantly leaving a red mark on his cheek. Bastard! I'm not negotiating the terms with you! His face was angry, and he shouted, If you don't want those projects back, then get out of my company! Grandpa, even if you kill me, I won't get those projects back! He would die if he went and asked those people for the projects back. But without the project, although Logan was planning to kick him out of the family, he wouldn't kill him. You evil bastard. Do you think I don't dare to kill you? He was furious. He swung the walking stick in his hand high up and gritted his teeth. It seemed like he was going to throw the bat at any time. Trevor made up his mind and closed his eyes. He was betting that Logan didn't have the guts to hurt him. He was right. After a long while, Logan finally stopped. He heavily knocked the walking stick on the ground and angrily scolded. What a misfortune to our family. My family is unlucky. At this moment, his intestines would turn with regret. Even if he were beaten to death, he would never have imagined that an idiotic person like him would destroy his family. Logan's face was full of worry and anger. He felt like he had aged ten years. Kevin watched coldly from the side. He had long since predicted that the Wrights would have this problem one day. Logan was too patriarchal and always felt that only Trevor could take over the company. However, Claire was the obvious choice. She was more even-tempered and had amazing character and wit. Logan was so focused on having a man take over the company that he had even tried to suppress Claire within the company. One could imagine how stupid Logan must have been to appoint that idiotic man. Grandfather, don't be too angry. At that moment, Taylor, who had been hiding in the crowd all this time, stood up with a coy smile. Logan leaned on his walking stick with his eyes closed, ignoring her. She wasn't embarrassed. After glancing at Claire, she couldn't help but say, Grandfather, it's not like we won't be able to get those projects back. You have a way? He opened his eyes and asked in a deep voice. She quickly shook her head. I don't have a choice. But she looked at Claire. I think Claire has a way. Claire? He shifted his gaze to her, only to see her looking at Taylor with an expressionless face. She coldly said, Why do you think I have a way? Your husband is friends with the head of the project, is he not? That's how we got the project in the first place. So why can't we use him again? She said as a matter of fact. Even though Claire tried to keep this a secret, the entire family still learned about Kevin knowing Matthew Bennett. Almost everyone knew about this. Many people secretly ridiculed Kevin because if he was classmates with Matthew, how did he become a real estate person in business while Kevin became a delivery boy? He had done it to himself, they would say. This left a lot of people questioning who Kevin was. Why do you think that Matthew would help us again? Why would he, after how stupid it was to get rid of it in the first place? Claire sneered again and again. Taylor finally showed her what it meant to be shameless and invincible. In the past, even though she knew that Kevin and Matthew were classmates, she still tried to get her family to make fun of him. She felt that once they got the project, they would never have to get Kevin's help again. But now, she jumped on the idea of asking him for assistance. They were all willing to tell Kevin to clean up Trevor's mess after bullying him this whole time. Now that they were in trouble, they would have to do some serious sweet talking. Is there anyone who bullies others like this? Taylor's expression was slightly unnatural, but she said in a righteous tone, Claire, how can you say that? Our family is all one unit. No matter who sold the project, it is everyone's problem now. If we don't work all together, there is no way that we will be able to make it out of this in one piece. Taylor is right, Claire. You can't be so selfish. If our company were to go bankrupt, you wouldn't be much better off. That's right. We need all hands on deck. We need to use every connection, including your husband's. This shit has been using all our resources and money for the past three years. If anyone deserves to help us, it's this piece of shit. The few distant relatives of the Wrights were exclaiming their thoughts from the crowd. 
they all owned shares within the company, so if they went down, they would also be in debt. Episode 187 Afterlife Protection You were eating on our dollar for all these years? The faces of the family grew sour. If he had the guts to disrespect members of their family after reaping their company's benefits, he was simply ridiculous. Isn't it? The family started to mock him, seeing that Kevin dared to be disrespectful. If you say so, Kevin smiled faintly. He was too lazy to explain himself to this kind of idiot. Since that's the case, you should contribute to our family as well. Someone coldly snorted. Go beg Matthew. If you can fix this problem, we can consider all of this. Maybe you will even be admitted to our family hall of fame. Someone from the crowd shouted. Consider it even. Be put in the hall of fame? He shook his head as the sneer on his face intensified. What? You're still unwilling? The older man, who spoke up earlier, raised his eyebrows and was very unhappy with him. Kevin didn't answer, but walked in front of Logan, looking straight in his eyes. I can help you get the projects back, but I have a condition. He paused for a moment, then continued. What condition? He was clear that Kevin was not the kind who would speak without thinking. He probably had the confidence to convince the president by saying this. I want something else. I want to establish another part of the company, he said word by word. How dare you! Impossible! How arrogant! You are only a live-in son-in-law. What qualifications do you have to establish another company? As soon as he said this, and before Logan could reply, the few stubborn elders in the crowd had already become anxious. No one had suggested something so ridiculous before, and they certainly did not want Kevin to be the first. This was asking to start a whole new side of the Wright family. Kevin would be in charge of this company, and not Claire. If Kevin came from a powerful family, then it would be fine. But since he would be in charge of the company, and with his reputation, it was bound to be a failure. On the other hand, Kevin was a stay-at-home husband, a pushover. No one would be able to respect him. Kevin ignored all the rude men from the crowd and continued looking at Logan. In the end, he was still in charge of the company. Why did you establish another side of the company? He asked. He had never expected him to make such a request. Kevin's mouth raised in ridicule, and they asked, If you say no to another side of the company, then I want you to make Claire the successor of the company. Wouldn't that be reasonable? Logan's gaze became serious. He indeed wouldn't hand over the company to Claire, but he didn't want Kevin to start another branch. He felt like Kevin had ulterior motives. You wishy-washy thing! You still dare to scheme and seek to gain control of our family? Logan, don't ever agree with this person. This person has evil intentions. He should be expelled from the family to make an example for others. A few family members were unable to contain their anger. Asking him to give control to Claire was like handing it over to Kevin as well. After all, Claire's children would be part of Kevin's bloodline. He laughed without saying a word. These old things thought that he had set his sights on their company. What short-sighted assholes. Kevin Bennett didn't even respect them at all. They were a tiny company, and he didn't even want it if it was given to him for free. There were many reasons why their company needed to be restarted. Part of it was because there were too many idiots like Trevor and Taylor in their family. They were rotten at their core. Everyone only cared about their interests. If Claire continued staying in their company, she would be driven crazy. On the other hand, he wanted Claire to gain some power within the company to protect herself from the rest of her family. This was because there would be a fight between Kevin and his own family soon enough. He had no way of predicting the outcome of this battle. If one day in the future, he died or had to flee the city, he wanted Claire to be protected. He would never allow this to happen. He didn't want to only protect Claire for a few years. He tried to protect her for the rest of her life. Logan took a deep breath. I agree to your conditions. The entire audience went silent, followed by an uproar. Logan, 
Why are you so messy? This would ruin the company. Why would you let someone so useless run the company? Me too. We must not let this asshole have any power. Many family members were outraged. Logan sighed. He didn't want to agree. But the current conditions they were in left him no choice. If they did not get those projects back, the company would go bankrupt in a few years. They needed to throw out a lifeline and accept the conditions. At that time, who else was going to help him? All right, I have made up my mind. If anyone still objects, they must ask Matthew Bennett to help us themselves. Logan snorted. These men were his cousins. They had no idea about the company's difficulties. Normally, they only earned a share of the company's stocks. How could any of them manage to help them with no real power? When he said this, many of the elders immediately became silent. If they could get the rights to the product... After Claire and Kevin left the building, many of the family members couldn't help but whisper a his head, so if anyone had drugs like this, it would be them. There were poisons, narcotics, cocaine, and any drug you could think of. It was top secret within their company because of how illegal it was. Brett, why are you asking about the drugs? Miles was on guard. This kid, Trevor, was planning to plot against someone. <clears throat> Mr. Robinson, I need to keep this matter top secret. He smiled again in embarrassment. Is it inconvenient to reveal? A playful smile flashed across his lips. He already guessed who he was planning to plot against. All right. You have the medicine you mentioned, but the price. Miles paused and said, It's not cheap. How much is it? Trevor swallowed his saliva and asked. One million dollars, he said lazily. A million? He couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. Why is it so expensive? You think it's too expensive? Miles snorted coldly, with a slightly affronted tone. Not expensive. Not expensive. He hurriedly shook his head. A million was something he could afford. Let me tell you. This drug was imported from Europe. There is no problem with its effects. Furthermore, if you use it, no one else will be able to find any traces of it. Every year, dozens of bottles would be sold on the black market. Most of the buyers were people with great positions within the city. And as for their uses, in any case, it couldn't be used on him. Most of them were similar to Trevor. 
what these people were most afraid of was being found out by others. Sure, I'll take one. After this is over, I need to show you my gratitude. He gritted his teeth. At this point, he had no choice but to try it. All right. I'll be waiting for your... Thanks. His face was full of smiles. Ever since he got to talk to Trevor, he got a shit ton of money. He realized that Trevor was his bitch. Claire and Kevin entered the top villa area on the other side of town. After entering their house, Kevin called Jared Smith. In my name, notify the Robinson family and some other top families in the city. Tell them to send someone to the South Empire building tomorrow. In addition to the Robinsons, Trevor also sold the projects to a bunch of real estate companies. These companies were a big deal in the city, but only had a few upper middle class families supporting them. Episode 189 Infatuation Gone Overboard Mr. Bennett, use your real name? Jared could not react for a moment. Was Kevin going to expose his real identity? Kevin replied softly. My right family name. All right, Mr. Bennett. I understand. He hurriedly nodded his head. This made it clear that he did not want to reveal his true identity. Yes. He nodded and hung up the phone, only to find Claire looking at him with a complicated expression. What's wrong? He said softly. Kevin, will you let me talk to them as well? I want to try. She whispered. She could already tell that Kevin was trying to make her the face of the company. He wanted her to have the ability to be independent. She had no time to think about the reason behind this. The only thing she has done is stand behind Kevin and wait for him to protect her. This time, she would finally have to stand up for herself and do something independently. All right, you can come and talk to them tomorrow. He smiled. Of course, he would support her unconditionally since this was his original intention. He could more or less guess what she was thinking. Thank you, Kevin. She smiled as if she was relieved of a heavy burden. She was worried that Kevin wouldn't let her participate in the negotiation because he feared she would be hurt. Why are you thanking me? He smiled and said. Claire, in tomorrow's negotiations, I have only one request for you. What request? She couldn't help but ask. Don't let yourself be wronged, he said seriously. Remember, you are my wife. No matter when or where, I will protect you from behind. You won't ever be...
bodyguards in black suits and headphones stood in two rows, looking extremely impressive. Manager Robinson. Why isn't that piece of shit coming in yet? His name was Zach Palmera. He was the manager of Palmera Real Estate. As one of the city's top 10 real estate companies, coupled with the fact that the Palmera family backed him, he was very rich. The size of the company was almost five billion. Originally, he did not intend to care about Kevin's deal, but after hearing that he had a more beautiful wife than any woman in the city, he changed his mind. He loved to fuck girls from rich families, which was perfect for him. Miles took a sip of the red wine and slowly said, What's the hurry? What should come will come sooner or later. Besides, if this piece of shit doesn't show up, wouldn't that be perfect for you? <laughs> Manager Robinson, you sure know how to joke around, he chuckled. I don't intend to give that asshole a single project back. I want to see all the hype about his wife. You also have a crush on his wife? Before Miles could say anything, another middle-aged man wearing gold-rimmed glasses spoke first. Rob, what do you mean? What do you mean by also? Zack's face did not look good. The golden-rimmed glasses man's name was Robert Weir. He was the general manager of Weir Real Estate, a very successful company within the city. What? Do you have an objection? Different from Robert, he had met Claire before. After that, he became infatuated with her, so he always tried to get close to her, but did not progress until Trevor allowed him to purchase the Beverly Hills project. I don't have any objections. I'm just afraid that the ugly-faced woman in your family might have an objection, he sneered. It was said that the Tigress was related to the Walter family, of the first string families. If he dared to cheat outside, the Tigress would not be courteous to him. Episode 190 Bedroom Secret Hearing the three words, old woman, Robert's expression changed. He was still very afraid of his family, but in front of Zack, he could not possibly admit his mistake. He said, That old woman... I'm planning on divorcing her. <laughs> Divorce her? If she doesn't give up, you'll be fine and even give her a break. He laughed loudly in ridicule. Robert was talking out of his ass. Someone in that family? How could he ever sleep without being scared? Hey, don't cause trouble. Mr. Weir became angry from the embarrassment. There were so many women in the room, it was indeed too much for him to humiliate him looking for trouble. Robert, if it wasn't for you causing trouble first, would I have talked back to you? Zack was also furious. He was targeted first, but why was Robert looking for trouble? He wanted to explain a little bit more, but at this moment, Miles frowned and said, They're not here yet. Why are you making such a ruckus? The moment he said this, the two of them stopped talking. They still had to respect him, after all. The success of their companies was in the hands of the Robinson family. That girl from the Wright family. Is she really that pretty? He had heard of her name before. The number one woman in the city. But he never had the chance to meet her because he felt that the possibility of this happening was very high. They were all wondering why she married a delivery boy when she could have had any rich man she wanted. But today, before she arrived, the two men were already fighting over her. They had seen enough of the world to know that Miles did not meet with people he did not want to see. They were always curious about this woman. Manager Robinson. Claire? She is indeed beautiful. Her beauty was emitted from the inside out, and she appeared naturally beautiful. Perhaps at first glance, it was not breathtaking. But the more you look at her, the more you fall in love with her. The more you fell for her, the more you were convinced that she was an angel from heaven. Since she's so beautiful, why is she still a chick? After being married for three years, Claire and her husband were still virgins. This matter was no longer a secret in the outside world, and her husband became a huge joke. Many people suspected that there was something wrong with Kevin. Because her husband is trash, Zack twitched his mouth. Besides pigs like Kevin, he couldn't think of any other reason to explain this. Yes. Robert rarely agreed with Zack. He heard from his comment that Claire reluctantly married Kevin and didn't like him, or else they would have had sex by now. Miles nodded 
and was about to say something when the door to the room was pushed open. Claire walked in, wearing a black suit with Aaron following closely behind her. The entire room went silent when she entered. It was the first time they were able to see her in person. They stared at her with laser focus, examining all of her curves. Zack felt the blood rush to his groin, her slim waist, her long, beautiful legs. Exquisite. He had to see her naked. If he could get his hands on a woman like that, he would be happy for the rest of his life. Miles' mouth went dry as well. At this moment, he could no longer think about Kevin, but could only think about how much he wanted her. He only had one thought in his mind. No matter what, he had to find a way to get his hands on her. To marry such a pig, she was wasting her beauty. She needed to see what it was like to be with a real man. Hello, Miss Wright. I'm Miles Robinson. He stood up first and stretched out his hand. Following that, the two men also stood up and stretched out their hands with a smile. She frowned slightly. She didn't like the lewd looks from the three of them, but she knew that since she had to possible for him to get drunk on Claire, if he could find a random reason to send